G'day guys and gal. Everyone is always like, without the Primarchs and Space Marines, mankind would have been doomed. Or you know, yet people defending the Horus Heresy is a necessary sacrifice in order for the Imperium to exist, or that the Big E was just the best at everything. Those people are wrong. Macarius, a mortal man born to mortal parents, proved that you don't need to be an 11 foot tall demigod with daddy issues in order to bend the galaxy over backwards and have your way with it. Some people might say he got lucky, but he had something that none of the super soldier gods had, a functional sex drive. This guy achieved more than any Primarch could in a fraction of the time, in a significantly more dangerous universe with a significantly smaller array of firepower, and I reckon it's time for you to learn about him. He completely shits on Horus as a war master. Yes, Horus botched the job a bit, but the point I'm trying to make here is that Macarius outperformed the Primarch, even if said Primarch had remained loyal. Today we're going to be going over the life and death of the legendary Macarius and his crusade, aka Alexander the Great in space, 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 space. Let's get into it. After the Horus Heresy, it was universally accepted that the Imperium had entered into a state of slow but steady decline. New spooky Xenos began to emerge, and the Imperium's military might had been slashed by about 75%. The Emperor was now a vegetable slash battery, and within a few hundred years, all of his loyalist sons went MIA. To top it off, religion and superstition overrode the Emperor's atheist vision, hence the equivalent of the Dark Ages occurred for thousands of years. It's actually a bloody huge testament to the Emperor that despite how viciously raped the Imperium got, it has still been able to weather absolutely everything the universe has thrown at it for over 10,000 years. So it does come as a bloody huge shock that near the middle of the 41st millennium, a man stepped forth and told the universe to suck off his big juicy balls. This man was called Macarius, but you can call him Alexander the Great in space, space, space. Seriously, his story is more or less just a copy and paste, but thrown in spaceships and aliens and shit. But that doesn't make it boring. Please don't click away from this video if you're an Alexander the Great nerd. I'm sure you can still get a chuckle or learn a thing or two. Born as a privileged white kid as the heir to a planetary governor, Macarius was a genius from the start, becoming a famous general in his early 20s by winning wars and squashing rebellions. This quickly earned him the attention of the High Lords, who were really keen for a win after all the shit that had been going on. He was quickly named the successor to the Lord Commander, and it really didn't take long before the previous Lord Commander died, allowing Macarius to take his place. Yeah, so Macarius was now the Lord Commander and War Master of the Imperium. Fuck me, that was pretty quick. But I guess old mate Alex began his conquest at the age of 22, so it checks out. Macarius visited Terra to accept the honour of being the new War Master, and he wasn't a bitch about it. Horus, take notes, you bitch. He didn't let the power corrupt him or get to his head, and he didn't want a bar of chaos. After his coronation, he then challenged the galaxy to a duel and declared his intent to conquer a bunch of shit which everyone was pretty down with. I'm sure his speech was kind of like Lord Hux's speech from the First Order, but instead of a whiny ginger bitch who sounds like he just popped a hemorrhoid, it was a dedicated and inspired young man. Macarius gathered a fuck off huge fleet and set off into the galaxy, straight towards hostile uncharted territory, and he had some pretty big exciting battles and some extremely close calls. On the high vault of Persepolis, Macarius found his signature winged helmet, which made him look really stylish and not at all like Alexander the Great, shut up. The following year, on the planet of Zaga 4, Macarius fought against Chaos Space Marines and was shot in the chest by a bolt around. But he survived! Yeah, the bolt around didn't explode. I mean, I would have thought that the impact of a bolt around hitting you would shatter your ribs and kill you anyway, but not if you're Macarius. A couple years after that, the Macarius Crusade came to a grinding halt when faced with a rogue human world which held a bunch of weapons from the Dark Age of Technology. Macarius, just like how Alexander the Great did, got his fleet to hurl a comet at the planet, wiping out their armies and forcing them to surrender. Or at least I think Alex did that, I haven't really brushed up on my history for a while. Just after that, Macarius is faced with a fuck off massive wah and ends up fighting their war boss. Now Macarius was a great commander, but fighting a war boss in combat is never a good idea, especially for a mortal man, so Alex got pretty bloody ruined. But he survived again and made a full recovery. In the first year of the crusade, 100 planets were conquered. In the second year, another 300 more were taken. By the third year, around 700 planets had been integrated into the Imperium. By the end of the seven year crusade, over 1000 new planets had been added into the Imperium. 
Why did this epic and highly successful crusade end, I hear you ask? Was Macarius finally defeated? Did his fleet run out of supplies? Or was he just satisfied with his work and wanted to take a breather? None of those are correct! The truth is, is that Macarius' fleet had pushed so deep into new land and territory and had conquered so many planets that they were at the very edge of the Astronomicon. If they went any deeper, they would be out of range for their astropaths to pass messages and their navigators would have an extremely difficult time getting them deeper. On top of that, the worlds that were to be conquered next were all haunted and spooky and shit. Macarius, being the mad lad he was, said, fuck it. Let's keep going. And his entire army was like, bruh, no. So he threw a huge fit and got super drunk. The next morning, he had a nice hangover recovery smoothie, as well as some Barocca, and he was in a great mood. He said to his men, all right, fair enough. Let's go home. Much to absolutely everyone's relief. Other than Macarius's, he was still secretly super down to keep going, but he's not a selfish prick that would sacrifice the lives of his men for his own personal glory. Take notes, Horace. On the way home, with his will and spirit broken due to the crusade being over, Macarius succumbed to a sickness he received on a jungle world and died. Being Macarius, he didn't try to make a deal with Nurgle or Chaos for survival or power, he just accepted his fate. Take notes, Horace. Except... What I said above is propaganda, and not entirely true. I mean, it's the High Lord's truth, so if you disagree you die, but the reality is always a bit different. His death is still a bit confusing, but it was quite violent. See, he had gotten sick, but not with jungle fever. Nurgle's plague had taken him, and given him only a few weeks to live. So instead of feeling sorry for himself or joining Chaos for survival, Macarius led an attack on the Nurgleite forces and killed their leader. He was then assassinated by either A, a Chaos cultist, or B, an Imperial Assassin, as it would sound better if he died in battle rather than getting taken by Nurgle's gifts. How it happened doesn't really matter. Macarius had fulfilled his destiny and his story had reached a spicy conclusion. His funeral was one of the greatest in the galaxy. An entire planet was converted into a shrine world dedicated to him. He was declared a saint by the ecclesiarchy and he had a million man parade in his honor. Pilgrims descended to the world to see his tomb and they all lived happily ever after. Psych! While Macarius was a flawless man, his generals were not. The death of Macarius had left a pretty significant power vacuum, which numerous generals found themselves in a position to exploit. As all the worlds that Macarius had conquered were new to the Imperium, they had also not yet solidified their loyalty. Hence begun the Macarian Heresy, where those 1000 worlds picked one of many sides and engaged in a 70 year bloody civil war, which was only ended due to large scale intervention of space marines. The heresy was basically a seven faction war, each one led by a previous general of Macarius. What started as an innocent power grab ended with a mass infestation of Xenos and Chaos, who used the war to try and worm their way in. Space Marines that were sent to pacify the rebellions instead took the opportunity to get even with other loyalist chapters over petty disputes and grudges. It was a very, very messy and chaotic time. It was really only the Dark Angels and Minotaurs who straightened things out properly. The Dark Angels were able to root out the Alpha Legion, and the Minotaurs basically just bullied everyone into submission. And by bully I mean massacre. Don't fuck with the Minotaurs. I reckon Chaos knew Macarius was incorruptible, hence they did what they could to kill him, and then they infected the minds of his lesser generals. Huge testament to Alexander the Great in space, space. Macarius's legacy would remain long after his death, with his tactics being studied for future generations and various machines of war being named after him. You know, as well as that cheeky heresy that happened, Tihi, after he kicked the bucket. But you know, don't worry about that. Long live Macarius the Great, the most original character to ever set foot in Warhammer 40k. And that does us for today, guys, the lore and story of Lord Macarius. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Or only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more great content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.